These SVS Ultra Surrounds have a trick that they want to show you. In today's video, we're going to be unboxing and giving an overview of the SVS Ultra Surrounds in Piano Gloss Black. I'm Barrett, and this is Speca Tech. Welcome to the channel. For those of you that may be new here or maybe don't follow the channel, here's a quick recap. I recently replaced my Klipsch RP lineup of speakers with the SVS Ultra speakers. Except for my rear surrounds, they are the SVS Prime Pinnacle Towers. If you want to know what I thought of the SVS Ultra Towers and the Prime Pinnacle Towers versus my Klipsch speakers, I will link the videos in the top right hand corner as well as down in the description below. Feel free to check those videos out after this one. So I've been waiting for the SVS Ultra surrounds for about three months now and that is because they were on back order for P Piano Gloss Black, but I am glad I waited because I wanted them to match my SVS Ultra Towers, which look so good in Piano Gloss Black. And these little side speakers have a trick up their sleeve, which we're going to talk about in just a second, but I'm anxious. Let's get into this box. Alright, so you got your usual SVS paperwork. So we have some jumper cables here with some rubber feet. And some brackets. And there's one speaker. These are actually surprisingly hefty. They got some weight to them. So these are a bipole dipole design but they also have a trick up their sleeve which we'll talk about in a bit all right so i'm gonna grab my camera and get some close-up of these speakers and then we'll talk about them So here we have them guys, the SVS Ultra Surrounds, and all I can say is wow. They look every bit as good as the SVS Ultra Towers, just smaller. Another thing that I love is how shallow they are, but we're going to talk about that in just a second. I also like that they included a wall mount bracket in the package. So if you do want to mount these to the wall guys, all you need to do is thread the bracket into the three screw holes on the back of the speaker, and then of course mount the other part of the bracket on the wall, wherever you want the speaker, and then just hang them up. I do feel that the current price of $999 US dollars is a fair price for these speakers. You are getting a lot for your money, and that has a lot to do with the trick that these have up their sleeve, which we're going to talk about later on in the video but if you want to know current pricing if you're watching this video months down the road I have dropped links down in the description so you can check it there so let's cover some of the specs and features of these little beauties these speakers measure 14 inches high 12.3 inches wide and 6.9 inches deep and they weigh in at 18 pounds each the depth is something that actually worked out really well for me my right side surround is placed on a shallow ledge and this speaker fits absolutely perfect on it so if you are in a similar boat these are a great solution. Each speaker has a two-way crossover and has dual one-inch aluminum dome tweeters and dual 5.5-inch composite glass fiber drivers in an aluminum basket. The crossover point between the tweeter and woofer is 2 kilohertz. Internally, each driver is sealed and separated from each other. The drivers are configured in a way so that they are not firing directly at the listening position. Again, this works out good for my smaller room. The person who gets the far right seat is very close to that speaker, and I don't want a traditional bookshelf firing directly into their face. Now, I'm a no-grill kind of guy, especially with these speakers because I do like to see the drivers, but the grills on these are quite well built and nice and rigid, and they do look quite nice as well. They use a pin and grommet system to attach and at the risk of sounding like a broken record because I did have the same nitpick with the prime pinnacle towers as well as the ultra towers and that is that I would have liked to have seen magnetic grills on these speakers I think it is just so simple to be able to take them on and off like that and it also does offer a little bit more of a cleaner look on the speaker because you don't have the holes for the pins on the grill a couple of times throughout this video I've mentioned that these speakers have a trick up their sleeve and they do and we're going to get to that in just a second but before we do if you're into audio and home theater please consider subscribing to the channel because that's what I'm all about and if you subscribe you might as well tick the bell icon so you can be notified about my future videos and please take just one second out of your time to tick that like button down below it takes hardly any of your time but it really is appreciated by me. Let's get back to that trick that I've been hinting about. So the SVS Ultra surround speakers can be ran as a bipole speaker or a dipole speaker and in a mode that SVS calls duet. 
So for those that aren't aware, bipole is when this side is firing in phase with this side of the speaker, and dipole is when this side is firing out of phase with this side, which creates a null on axis to the speaker. So the real magic here is with duet mode. Well, what is duet mode? Well, that means that this side of the speaker is operating as its own channel, and then this side of the speaker is also operating as its own channel. So essentially, if you have a 5.1 system, but you wanna turn it into a 7.1 system with the same amount of speakers, you can do that with these ultra surrounds. How? Well, this side of the speaker that would be facing the front stage of your home theater would be the side surround, and then this side of the speaker that would be facing the rear of your home theater would be the rear surround. And all you need to do is power them as separate speakers. So it does show on the back of these speakers how to connect them in duet mode, but essentially all you're doing is powering two separate speakers that are housed in the same box. This isn't a feature that I can utilize in my room because the back of my theater does not have a wall, and I believe that this type of system would work best if the wall is fairly close to the back of your seating. If you guys are interested in more specs and features of these speakers, I have dropped a link down in the description below. In just a moment, I am gonna discuss my first impressions on how these speakers sound, but before I do, I just wanted to let you know that I have brought back something that I used to do, and that is Movie of the Week. What is Movie of the Week? Well, it is a 4K Blu-ray disc that is $20 or under, and I feel it is at least worth watching at that price. So if you wanna know what Movie of the Week is this week, just check the description down below, and it'll be labeled Movie of the Week. Moving on to my first impressions, I do like these speakers and I like them a lot, but please keep in mind that I did buy these speakers with my own money, so there's no influence here from SVS whatsoever. I bought these from a great Canadian business called Summit Hi-Fi, so shout out to Summit Hi-Fi for supplying all of my SVS speakers, but just so you know, these opinions are mine and mine alone. Let me start by saying I really do like the look of these speakers. They are a very attractive looking speaker. I wasn't shy about saying the exact same thing of the Ultra Towers, and these are basically the exact same type of design, just in a different shaped box with different drivers. These speakers really do blend in well with the Ultra Towers, but at the same time, they aren't super flashy. Even though they are shiny, they do blend in nicely with the room. But they also back up their looks with great sound. So because these are from the Ultra lineup of speakers, they are gonna be tuned similar to the SVS Ultra Towers. Obviously they aren't gonna have the same capabilities because the drivers are different, but they are gonna be what's called timbre matched. And all that means is you're gonna have a smooth sounding pan when you're panning from the sides to the front. You're not gonna have a huge difference in sound signature. I do like the fact that SVS had a lot of attention to detail here. A lot of people do put their side surround slightly above ear level, and SVS recognized this and placed the tweeter at the bottom so that it is closer to ear level than it would be if they placed it at the top. And because of all those things, these speakers are a great fit for my home theater. Ever since running room calibration on my Marantz AV7706 and using it with these speakers, I've had a fantastic experience. They definitely complement the SVS Ultra Towers quite well, and they are working very well in my side surround position. So far, I am definitely happy with my purchase, and I feel like I got a great speaker for the money. In the near future, guys, I will be doing a full review of these speakers, but I'm also gonna be doing a video about the whole SVS setup and what I think of it, and I'm sure there will be some comparisons in there to the old Klipsch RP lineup that I used to have. I'm also gonna be doing another video that I'm pretty excited about, and that is a comparison of the Marantz AV7706 versus the new Anthem AVM70. I'm currently waiting on my unit. I'm hoping to receive that sometime at the end of January, but it's kind of up in the air right now for their release date, but let's hope that I get it by then so that I can do that video. If you guys do want to stay up to date on all those videos and more because I do have quite a bit more coming, please consider subscribing and then tick the bell icon so you can be notified about those future videos. And please take just one second and click that like button down below. And guys, remember to enjoy your systems. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. <laughs>